I've just started it. And okay, one as well to, um, yeah, to confirm that we're good with the recording. Okay, so yeah, you grab your uh, cup of tea or something, but don't relax too much. We will be adding some interactivity during the session. Uh, so be prepared for some voting or jumping in with your questions. And now just two words about the rules. Uh, unfortunately, we have today uh, 45 minutes max. So after um, each session of discussion with our uh, today's special guest, uh, you're welcome to ask one maximum two questions. And also we will provide some perks for our attendees. Um, so don't miss them. They will be at the very uh, end of the webinar. And now before I introduce our guest uh, today, let me tell you a story. And that's a story of Jake, a professional accountant providing services to small businesses. And recently he has taken five new customers only to realize that his capacity allows him to fully cover the needs of three of them, answering their questions, guiding them where needed. So the other two were at risk uh, of not receiving the quality service from him. So to cope with the situation, he started overworking, sitting late at night, missing dinners with the family, and developed stress-related anxiety, and barely came to the end of the bookkeeping period, and basically on the brink of a heart attack. So he spent several vacations after this, uh, visiting his therapist and treating his nerves. Well, that's a sad truth, uh, but the story of that kind is common for many bookkeepers and accountants, especially at the beginning of their practice. So today, we will talk about how to effectively manage your workload and avoid situations like this. And our today's guest, and I'm really happy to introduce her, uh, will help us to solve it all. So welcome Tanya Hiltz at our today's uh, webinar. Hello, Tanya. How are you Hi. today? I'm good. Thanks, Polly. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. So a good. lot of uh, you might know her um, basically as a founder of Cloud Bookkeeping Services, a business that successfully runs for years. Others may know her as the creator of Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp, an initiative for professionals to better accounting logistics um, and efficiency. And I'm not mentioning numerous other events she participates in. For those of you who don't know her, well, she is amazing. She creates things from the scratch, and I would name her story definitely as one of the truly successful stories in the sphere. I'm really glad you're here today, Tanya, and thank you very much for joining us. So Holly, happy to be here. <laughs> yep. So, yep. And I have some um, questions for you. So basically, we can investigate the relationships between accountants and uh, small business owners, and maybe you can share some of the um, tips that you use to uh, enhance the accounting workflow. So, and the question number one would be how to build comfortable client accountant relations. So as I believe that's the basically one of the main conditions of a successful accounting practice. Um, and uh, like this is to have the healthy relationships between the accountant and the client. So how would you characterize a good relationships and how to build them? So, and, and that's a great question, and I truly believe as well that that is very important in a foundation. My background um, was first customer service. This is my third career, so that's pulled into everything that I do. And so you need to really have trust with your clients and that they need to know that you have their back and that they can turn to you for any questions um, they may have or any advice. Um, and they need to know that we're more, especially these days, that we're more than just data entry people and number crunchers. Um, so we're basically more like a business consultant with them. Yep. And that's so true. Yes. Um, yep. So um, working with the... And actually, yep, let's add some interaction at this point too. Um, do we have any questions or does anybody from the on, uh, audience want to share their own good or bad experience of building relations with the clients? Or we have someone really noisy there. I think it's Margarita and if I may, can you, yes, yeah, switch off your mic for just a sec? Yes, yeah, so that we can finish. Thank you so much. Yeah, so do we have someone from the, from the audience who want to share their good or bad experience with, in their relations with their accountants? 
I don't think so. We have really quiet audience here today. Okay, but that's also good. Maybe you, Tanya, have some examples. Sure, um, absolutely. So we've got, um, we've got, I mean, some really great um, client relationships. Um, and I think the worst one, um, I don't know, I think, um, Paulina, that, Polly, that you guys can actually just mute everybody on your end. You can just hit mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that you can mute everybody and then that way if they need to speak, they can unmute themselves. Okay, that's a good idea. Let me do so. So. <laughs> much better awesome thank you so much okay so um i think the, the one that's probably more re relevant is my worst client relationship um and i think that this is probably more relevant to people because i think as i kind of talk through this you guys will all relate to one or multiple parts of this um and so basically our worst client relationship was with somebody who didn't value us at all um he didn't value what we did he didn't value our time. I didn't realize that at first, obviously, or I wouldn't have dealt with them. Um, but what happened is he kept pushing, basically pushing that line to try to get out of us what he felt was the value that he was paying for. He was always arguing with us every time he would ask us a question, we would answer and then he would argue it back. Um, we would then send him a link of where on, you know, Revenue Canada or, you know, some our supporting documents to back that up. And he would still continue to argue that. Um, and basically at the end of the first year, we actually lost money. When I worked out how much time basically mm -hmm. that I had paid for the team, we lost money on them. Um, and that was because I allowed his behavior to continue all year long. Year two, I thought, you know what? Let's double his rate. That's gonna make him leave. I didn't wanna fire anybody at that point. It's, you know, I was a little uncomfortable firing. So I thought, let's just double his rate. And if he doesn't leave, then it's worth it. Um, yep. at least to be able to continue. Uh -uh. Why was I wrong? No, that type of narcissistic personality needs to continue to feel they're getting their value. So he didn't leave because I think he knew he had no choice um, because nobody else would deal with him. Okay. So he said, fine, I'll pay double the rate. But he kept pushing back worse and worse. I had, you know, um, Lee and Sandra were both in tears with at least once or twice from him. Um, I constantly kept having to jump in. He very demeaning. He kept pushing again, trying to push more and more work back. So what we ended up doing was creating flows and said, listen, this is the day of the work, the week that we work on your file. We will answer and respond to your emails and phone messages on your specific day of the week. Um, so we ended up having to restrict the flow, which didn't feel really good for me because you know that wasn't really um, developing the type of client relationship that I wanted having to be that restrictive. Um, but that way it, it, it kept the work down that we were working, um, basically mm -hmm. the time down that we were working on it. Um, but again, he kept pushing worse and worse and worse at the end of year two, I, I realized, you know what, we need to fire him. He is not the right fit. Um, he is just, he's somebody he'll never see the value and I don't want to work with that type of narcissistic personality. So my key takeaways from that were to help me really build and I uh, visualize who my ideal client was, who the type of person was that I wanted to work with. And I no longer actually do year long contracts without an escape clause in there that basically says throughout the year, we will continuously monitor and re the price will change. Um, if, the work or, you know, the scope of work, the type of work, the amount of work changes. So Absolutely. I built that clause in there. I no longer have that, that, that year where we're stuck to it. So that way we're not stuck in there. Um, because no amount of work is really worth dealing with that type of personality. And I'm no longer afraid to fire the wrong client anymore either. Oh yeah. And that's an important takeaway. That's so true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That all sounds really harsh, but sound really true. I mean, that's, what some people are okay so um and working with the clients books what is the most time consuming part in your opinion um believe it or not it well there's two parts there's dealing with third party integrations is a real pain point for us we have not had luck with that so i integrate as little as possible so when it's coming to you know like third um party the pos systems Mm -hmm. Square, anybody who knows Square knows Square is a real, uh, has a real, a real pain point with us. There's a lot of duplicating <laughs> sales. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other is actually working with the clients and ensuring we're collecting the information that we need 
in a timely manner um, because clients, you know, maybe they'll give us half a receipt or half of the story, half of the information. So trying to get the full information is very time consuming as well. Oh, I see. Uh, so are there some ways to handle this or it just goes as it goes? Um, no, we've actually found ways. Um, we actually institute basically what's called an after action review, which is after everything I do, I take a look and say, did I get the outcome I wanted? Is there anything I can do to change mm -hmm. to get a better outcome? And so what we've done is we actually use Google Docs for both of those um, those solutions. So we use Google Docs when we're dealing with clients. If we've got anything that we don't have, maybe we can't don't have the proper receipt and you know in receipt bank. Um, we don't have the receipt at all and it's in the QBO bank feed. So we use this to communicate back and forth with them collaboratively. We put our questions, they answer, then we've got a record of that and we can go back and forth in real time week to week. So that's been a fairly recent um, implementation and it's worked well. The other thing that we use Google Docs for is surprise, surprise, business importer. Uh, we the third party integrations, we can take that completely out of out of the aspect um, or out of the picture now. And then what we can do is actually take their we still want to try to get their detailed information in there. Detailed information is clean data, which will help us, you know, be able to work move into the financial advisory aspect a lot better with them. Um, so we still want the detailed information. So how do we get it? We manually key it in mm -hmm. or we can use business importer to either one of two ways, pull a report from their third party POS. We set up um, a separate tab through business importer to basically weed out what we want and we upload that tab, which is really easy. So that way when we get those reports, we just do a quick copy and paste, you know, the setup is already done and we can import or we actually will do a Google Docs collaboratively with the client. So if the client yeah. does not want to pay us to do their day-to-day -day entering and they can't get the reports that we need, they actually, we will set up that and they can enter into the Google Docs and then we can just have the Google Docs automatically sync. Gosh, yeah, that really solves it. Yeah, so Google Docs is really seems to be answer or part of it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then to really help with the clients too, what we do is we meet with them when we're either onboarding or re-onboarding, which is clients that fell into bad habits. We do uh -huh. a re-onboarding. We actually meet with them basically once a week over you know the next eight weeks, five quick five minute phone calls, just to kind of go through any feedback so from that well, week. The other side now, is looking nice, doesn't it? We've now clearly outlined um, exactly what the repercussions will be if we don't kind of stick to this plan to keep everything running efficiently, their price will be affected. So now they know their consequences and expectations. Gotcha. Well, yeah, that sounds really like an answer. So yeah, and you also mentioned that the apps, they kind of bring a lot of sometimes mass and really sometimes it's time consuming to fix it all. But um, I know there's a common fear in the accounting circles that the automation can destroy the accounting practice at all. So um, let me first of all ask our audience upon what do they think of this. So do you, um, guys, let's vote. So for those of you who uh, really feel like the accounting can destroy, uh, oh gosh, accounting will not destroy anything. No, the apps, <laughs> they can just destroy the accounting. Please vote one and uh, vote two for those who believe um, that's it's, that it's all good. I mean, the apps will help. Uh, and um, yeah, also I went through your article, Tanya, for the firm of the future. So I believe that you are among those who actually think that the apps can help. Is that right? They can. Um, they, they can in the right when used properly. Um, I do believe that automation can be a good thing when used properly and it can be a bad thing and too much of anything is, is always a bad thing right i mean too much chocolate you know or too much you know mcdonald's or too much anything it's always a you know bad thing so um if it's used properly absolutely it can enhance it so um just for example um when it's not overused it can enhance what we do so it can help us um help us get the receipts quicker, but we still need to, so for receipt bank with our automated rules, for example, we don't, or sorry, our Canadian laws, we still look at every single receipt because every mm -hmm. single receipt needs to be compliant. So although we're, we're automating, receiving the receipt, we're not allowing the AI to automate what to do with the receipt. So again, you need to balance it out. 
So um, we, we need to manually make sure that the AI is not picking wrong things. I've seen AI pick the wrong date format. Um, so it's gone into the completely wrong date. Um, you know, we want to make sure that there's no client error that the client hasn't gone in paid for gas and then bought, um, you know, bought pop or chips or something or a lottery ticket along with it that, you know, that, that has to go shareholders or owners draw. I see. I see. So it's pretty much like for, yeah, um, as far as I understand to balance it all. So not to use too much automation, but also to use it like wisely. If it's like really needed, then okay, go ahead. It will save you a ton of time. And yeah, pretty much our audience is also uh, voting that the automation helps the majority of voters, nine out of 10, that the automation helps and it does if it's understood correctly, that's so true. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, and getting to the apps, uh, do you, Tanya, let's say, have uh, a stack of apps that you use in your work, like uh, just a list of them, or can you share it with our viewers? Um, do you have any favorite apps? Yep, absolutely. So our main tech stack is we use QBO, our main software. Um, I just want to, it's, it's not that it's any better than anything else out there. We just wanted to specialize in one. We use Receipt Bank for the clients to send us the pictures of the receipts. We find the client interaction is a little bit better. We do still use HubDoc for fetching in the bank statements. Auto entry, um, if we've got something on multi-currency on the income side, that works really well for that. We use Business Importer to get sales details in. Mm -hmm. um, it's QBO, Standard Payroll, and Knit are our payroll ones. We use Rewind. I saw somebody mention Rewind. Rewind is a great feature for um, to make sure that you have, in case automation messes something up, you can rewind it to before that automation um, hits stuff in, which is great. Lifesaver. <laughs> exactly, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, or in the States, um, there's also um, there's Rewind and Chronobooks, but Rewind is currently all that's available to us in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chat and PayPi is what we're using for when we're starting to get into the advisory and things. And then our own flows is QBOA work and 17 hats as a CRM and then to automate our communication with our clients. So that's basically our full tax set. Wow. So I hope you, you took some notes, guys, because that was gold. I mean, really, really gold. So all of the apps, they really can help. So, and that's so good. And who have tested them? Tanya have tested them. So that's perfect. Um, you send me a list of apps via chat? Oh, sure. Yep. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll type them. And I know Polly's going to do a demo. So when she does a demo, then I'll type them all in. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. And do you um, have any tips for those who want to start automation of their workflow? Um, like any like advice upon how you choose the app or like what is it you could you would advise? Um, so, and, and I made the same mistakes I think everybody does out there. There's app overload and I just really, really caution people about app overload. So just because the apps I use, like I've chose to use are a good fit for me, they might not be a good fit for you or there might be other ones out there that you're using that I don't use. Again, just they're not a good fit for us. It doesn't mean they're not a good fit for you. Um, but I just really caution app overload. So when we're looking for apps, what we're looking for is we want something that solves multiple solution or multiple problems. Um, maybe we've got to look at an outside of the box solution. So 17 hats, for example, it's not perfect, but we automate our quotes, contracts, emails, questionnaire, website, lead forms, um, and then a lot of reminders to clients. So we set the automation for that. It's not completely perfect because it was created by photographers for photographers, but with a little bit of work around, we're able to do that. And that essentially takes care of, I think there's three or four other apps that do all of those separately. Now we've got everything in one. We use QBOA work, um, you know, instead of like Arrow or Jetpack mm -hmm. or whatever, just simply because it's already there and it's free. So why pay more, especially when you're starting out? App overload also comes with really big bills. So just, you know, make sure that you find something that works with you. Be prepared to maybe look, you know, think outside of the box a little bit, but that'll help keep your tech stack down because the last thing you want to do is try to learn 20 apps, try to get your team to learn, you know, 20 different apps that all do the same thing. It just, it gets really overwhelming for everybody. And then of course your costs skyrocket. I see. Uh, okay. And now we can again do some voting and I also will ask you, Tanya. So 
Um, the apps, for sure, they can be helpful and for sure they can be dangerous and they can ruin it all in your QuickBooks or whatever is it the accounting system you're using. Uh, so that's the question to our um, viewers today. So do you guys um, had this um, kind of, have you went through this process of um, um, connecting the app and do you actually um, base, were you, were those kind of automation, was it based on the accounting advice, accountant advice, or have you done it on your own? So vote one if that uh, was something you did under the accountant's uh, guidance, or vote two if you did it on your own. And meanwhile, uh, Tanya, do you think that small business owners should connect the apps themselves, or should they use the advice of their accountant? I personally believe that they should contact us, um, not necessarily the accountant, whoever's actually in the books day to day, um, because of course there's some accounts that work in the books, some accountants just do the high level overview. So I've had accountants recommend apps be connected and it's buggered up the books. I've had clients, uh, you know, attach their own stuff and bugger up the books and clients have had stuff that hasn't buggered up. <laughs> it's kind of a mix of both, but I think if you've got a good, rapport with your client um that's something that you can set them up and just say listen you know this type of stuff can bugger things up i've actually had a client where they they did an integration and it created so much that you know uh, that i had to manually go in and fix everything and it was probably about a 10-hour job to fix what their integration is set up so mm -hmm. i absolutely build them separately for it i am not putting in that type of work just for free on them, so I build them separately for it. And they'll Absolutely. tell you they don't do any they don't do anything Absolutely. again without checking with me now because their bill was higher than my normal rate would be because Oh Tanya, something happened to your mic. Something happened to your mic. We can't hear you at all, or maybe it's me only, but I can't hear Yes. I can see that yeah, I don't know, we can't hear you. Oh your internet. Oh, it's up. It's all good. Say something. You guys can hear me now? Yep, we do. All good. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, and again, I, I just build them more just simply because of the fact that now I had to drop things to try to fix it. And I want, I also wanted to make a point. Um, I tend to treat my clients in a way, the way that I treat my child. And when I treat my child, my mother was always that because I told you so. And I was the opposite. I'm like, they need to understand consequences for their actions. So therefore I charged more, told them why they were being, char being charged more at a higher rate so that that way they won't repeat that mistake. So. Yeah, I'm so much agree. I mean, I'm also from the, I work very close with support. I'm a head of support department and like, it's very different how people go to, you know, um, like connecting the apps. Some of them, they're really, okay, I'm testing it now, but I'm not gonna really connect it because I need to actually discuss it with my accountant first. And you see like, okay, this person's books, they will be totally fine because that's, you know, that's something they, they really think of the, the consequences of their actions. And that's something that you mentioned, which is really important. And some others are like trying to handle it on, on their own. And yeah, sometimes it, it's really, it's really nasty. I mean, they really have something then to fix. Uh, so yeah, which is just, guys, be careful with this and make sure you really understand how the app works before you do the math in your QuickBooks. That's so much true. Yeah, and this is where rewinding ChronoBooks is really good because you can actually back that out. But of course, yep. you know, we haven't always had that and not all clients have that. We now add that. That's our main, that's on all client software now. They don't get a choice. But our older clients, yeah, we haven't quite added that mandatory in on all of them yet. Yep, and that's okay. So what do we have us for the results? Uh, so 11 uh, participants uh yeah chose the app on their own and only two consulted to the accountant wow that's interesting and do you let's do another voting and do you guys had some bad experience or good experience with the apps so like as majority of you connected them on your own so vote one if uh it was a bad experience and vote two if like it was bad and you would never want to try again the automation so let's do this which is because it's really interesting um Okay, so in meanwhile, where are you voting? And that's the time where I will do a small demo and you, Tanya, can go ahead and, and share the apps uh, in the chat. Uh, okay, so let me guys 
show you how the just a very small demo of one of the apps Sunny mentioned is Business Importer. That's the demo produced uh, by our company, by Cloud Business. Uh, let me share my screen so that you can see this. Actually, our app will, yeah, you don't need to use the chrono books or something like this because our app has the rollback feature. So whatever you've done to QuickBooks can be undone within one click. But basically, I want to show you the import. So import of data from Excel to your QuickBooks. And you're choosing what you're going to import, in my case, the sales receipts. And that's the import from the Google Doc. So basically, um, you just copy the link and insert the link inside of the app. And uh, that's basically it. If you've already used this integration, so everything will be preset. So it's as simple as you just hit start import after you've uh, uploaded your your link to the app and that's it you just uh, wait until the process of the import starts so yeah it started so all good you don't even need to wait until it's all over you can go ahead and upload another file and also in case you have several quickbooks companies connected like several clients you can manage it in the app and import something other like cash expenses in this case to another uh, client. And this time I'm browsing the file from my computer, which is just a regular Excel. Also I'm uploading it to the app and just selecting the sheet needed. And that's it, I hit next. Also everything is preset from my previous imports and start import. And that's basically it. The app starts importing the data to QuickBooks creating, yeah, dozens of transactions um, yeah, in minutes. And you can actually just click the link and uh, inside of the app and it will open the transaction created on the QuickBooks site. So that is basically it. So um, that's just really a short demo of how it can look. Sorry, was there a question? Yes. Um can this be used for uh, mapping the list of uh, credit card transactions? Yeah, like yeah, it can. It supports pretty much all of the QuickBooks entities. So you absolutely can use it and it supports imports from Excel or CSV files or from uh, Google Sheets. And this is the feature I know Tana enjoys a lot. So yeah, this is the Google Drive feature. Actually, once you upload the, from Google Drive, you can schedule the import. So basically it will run automatically without you even open the app. So just like uh, every, I don't know, Monday and Wednesday at, I don't know, like 12 p.m. or, and that's it. So it's really, really um, kind of easy to use. And also there is a support. So in the case of any questions, just contact our support inside of the app and they will figure it out for you, which is really, really convenient. So- Like a testing environment? Yep, the app provides a 14 days free trial where you can test all of the features. Um, yeah, so you can pretty much test it all um, before even thinking of doing a subscription. So absolutely. No, I mean like um, uh, an, an already uh, connected user to a, to a company because with the um, with the trial, you need to connect your your business importer user to QuickBooks. So I, I was asking if there's like um, like a trial QuickBooks to to test the integration too. Yes, to Is that test so? everything with, without without having to touch your books. I see. Well, uh, no, there is, because it's a separate from QuickBooks, separate app from QuickBooks and we're a third party. So um, you can create a trial QuickBooks account and test the integration there. Or also the app provides um, this undo function. So after any import, you can click revert and the app will take whatever it put to your QuickBooks. It, would take, it will take it from your QuickBooks. So pretty much you're protected from doing any harm to your books. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so feel free to test it out uh, even on your, your actual books. So you will be able to undo everything. Um, okay. Yep. And um, yeah, as for takeaways from the meeting, as uh, we actually promised uh, on the very beginning, um, for those um, for those people who are really new to Business Importer and they want to try it, just contact our support um, with the Workbusters promo code. 
and our support team will apply for new users one month of unlimited free uh, import. So you will be able to test uh, this integration like, like in full um, during the month instead of 14 days. So just remember WorkBusters promo code. And for those who are already in business importer, uh, you will be provided one month free subscription. So also just contact our support with the WorkBusters promo code. And that's it. So I hope you would enjoy it. And um, also to make a conclusion to uh, all of it. Oh, yep, so let me um, read aloud one of the um, uh, testimonials from one of our customers. And it's really connected to the story I told in the very beginning. Uh, it's uh, this, I can't overstate um, how valuable this is. Uh, as the financial administrator of a nonprofit, I was manually creating dozens of journal entries each month to allocate donation revenue, internal fees, sharing, payroll, etc. This had all been reduced to literally one spreadsheet, uh, which I upload um, as a journal and I'm done. Uh, this has increased my capacity and allowed me to actually serve three additional nonprofits because my time is so much better used. Um, it has increased my impact and ultimately enabled me to serve many more nonprofits because we're not spending uh, that much time. So that was, I mean, that's a, um, a real, uh, real story. We wanted to hear you today. And um, we still have a couple more minutes. So if any of you have any questions or stories you wanna share or maybe questions to Tanya, go ahead. We have just several more minutes to, yeah, to, to discuss all of this. Okay, so while we're waiting for people to, to enter, if I can just share um, a, a few things as well, um, Polly, about the business importer. So a lot of times our clients aren't necessarily getting us the reports, you know, in a way that we need it. We have to sit there and fiddle with them. So what we do is we actually have a Google, a Google Doc set up that we've got two tabs. One tab is the report that they give us so we can copy and paste it in there. And then mm -hmm. the second tab, I actually map to take the information that I need. So that way we're not fiddling with the report every single time. We've done it once on the first one, copy paste in, and then it's the second one, we, we just call it business importer tab. And that tab is mapped from the first tab. And then that is what actually- that Like is with formulas, tab. right? Exactly, with yeah. formulas just to pull out, because they, like we've got one client that sends us one, there's a hundred columns. We don't need a hundred columns and it's going to take me time to sit there and delete all the columns that we don't need. Yep. So I've just set this extra tab up just to bring, to bring in the dates and, you know, the client and where we're coding it, basically coding it to. And then that's the tab that is mapped to business importer. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it works really well. Um, and then I found the mapping was really easy. I've used transaction pro transaction pro, um, it works for some people and I found it business importer was a lot easier to map. Um, and, and I, I just, yeah, I, I do like it better. And you're right. The Google thing, mm -hmm. the, the Google drive is amazing. Yeah. Whew. We're really trying yep, to, to do so and maintain this, uh, the simplicity because it's, it's really hard when you get a lot of like queries. Okay. Can you do this? Can you do this? And we're starting adding features and it's really, really hard to, to keep it simple. But we exactly. are trying. We're trying. Um, exactly. One more question. Okay, one more question. Yep. So, um, how does it work for um, different users? Is there one admin user that can allow other not admin users to use the business importer function? Yep, exactly. So, if you have several QuickBooks users, you will be able to invite them all. To the same business importer account so that all of them would be able to upload files into quickbooks yep you can do so absolutely and also in the chat i can see the question regarding uh does it works for quick uh, for quickbooks desktop um and we have two separate versions of business importer and there are two separate apps and one is for quickbooks uh, online and this is the one i was showing on the video and another one is for quickbooks desktop so basically yes we do have but make sure you know there are two separate apps 
um, yeah, and there is a link in the chat to this, um, to the desktop version. Um, okay, so that's amazing that you have questions, guys. Um, hope this, maybe some of you will find this software helpful for you and it will save you some time because this is our overall like goal to save your time on to do some you know more more useful uh more meaningful things than just data entry okay so that's pretty much it i think that's all the questions i have for tane and if uh, our audience doesn't have any more so we can finish it all thank you very much tanya for joining us today it was real pleasure uh, actually to work with you because i remember having some demos with you and i remember this really really warm atmosphere in your office i mean just like it's like almost a family like hey do, do you know this yeah, yeah yeah and how to open this account uh, that was so cool i mean just really really nice so it's a pleasure to thank work you. with you and to have you here today with us great yeah thank you and just one more thing if i can just point out because i know we Absolutely. have about a few minutes somebody's asked yet one thing that we're finding the business supporter is really good for is if we want to be again to be able to get those daily details in without raising the client's rate to be able to move them to the advisory. Um, what we used to do, we had clients that we used to just enter and they didn't want to pay us to get the, the details in. So we would just simply do a month end summary. So now what we're able to do is say, okay, get us the report so we can use this to put it in. It doesn't affect their price, which then helps us sell the advisory down the road. Wow. So yeah. a really good tool for that. So cool to hear this. Okay. Yep. So thanks uh, very much to you, Tanya. And thanks a lot for all of our participants today. Thank you guys. Um, well, you rock. You were, you've been really active, like voting there in the chat. I know Sasha was like really tired, like counting all those zeros and like ones and twos. So yeah, thank you so much and have a good rest of the day. All of you. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. Take care, everybody. Bye.